Janie laughed. Just kidding, Bat, she said. Hey, do you want to help me take the curlers out of my hair? Bat liked to help Janie with hair stuff, and she barely ever let him. Okay, he answered. Just let me put Thor away first. Chapter 4. A Stinky Joke After breakfast, Ezra came over to help Janie practice for her big audition. Janie thought Ezra was hilarious, but usually Bat did not agree. Hey, Batty, Ezra said when he arrived. I've got a joke for you. Okay, what do you call a flying skunk? Actually, Bat said, skunks can't fly. They're mammals, and the only flying mammal is the... A smellicopter, Ezra erupted. Then he laughed loudly at his own joke. There were so many things wrong with this whole situation that Bat felt himself starting to rise up on his toes the way he did sometimes and pulling his arms close to his side the way he did sometimes, the way he sometimes did, hands prepared to flap. Ezra laughed even louder. Hey, he said, you're the flying mammal, right? Because you're bat. Good one, batty. Come on, Ezra, Janie said. And Ezra followed her out of the entry hall and toward the kitchen, still laughing. When the hallway was quiet, Bat remembered to take deep breaths. And he let himself bounce on the ball of his feet ten more times before putting his heels on the floor. He wiggled his shoulders around the way that helped him relax and his arms dropped slowly to his sides. Little Bat, crooned Mom from behind him. Are you all right? Bat nodded. He didn't feel like talking. Mom came around to his front and held out her arms. She knew that Bat sometimes didn't feel like being touched when he was upset. And this was her way of letting him know that she was there if he wanted a hug. All he had to do was take one step forward. After a moment's hesitation, he did. Mom pulled him close and Bat closed his eyes as he let his face mush into the softness of her stomach. He felt the snug tightness of her arms around his shoulders and back, the gentle firm pressure of her embrace. He felt safe and warm and let himself take a long, deep breath. Mom smelled of rosemary like sunshine and peppermint and pine. Bat took another deep breath before he tapped his hand against mom's leg, their sign that he was ready for the hug to be over. She loosened her arms and stepped back. Are you gardening? Bat asked. Yes, mom said. Do you want to help? Yes, said Bat. And then he had a really good idea. Mom, he said, do you think we could research what kind of vegetables skunks like to eat and plant them in the garden box in the backyard? He looked up at mom's face, excited. I think that's a great idea, mom said. A research project. And maybe you could ask Israel if he'd like to help. And then Bat had another idea. We have to do a spring project for school, he said. And we're supposed to have a partner. Maybe Israel's and my project could be researching and growing a skunk garden. You better not plant any roses, said Ezra. He and Janie had just walked back into the hallway on their way to the front yard. Get it? Because roses smell good. Oh, Ezra, Mom said. That joke really stinks. That time, everyone, even Bat, laughed. Chapter 5, Almost Late. On Monday, Bat waited outside of the school for Israel to arrive. Mom want, waited with him. You know, she said, you could just ask him in class. Someone else might ask him first, Bat said. The chances of one of your classmates asking Israel to be partners for the class project between the parking lot and the classroom door are relatively low, Mom said. Low isn't zero, Bat answered. Mom couldn't argue with this. They waited together, standing in the front of the main entrance to the Saw Wheat School at the sea of arriving students and teachers parted around them. Bat counted six kids from his class. Jenny, Luca, Ramon, me, Henry, and Starla. But none of them was Israel. Let's play a waiting game, Mom suggested. Waiting was one of the things that was very, 
very hard for Bat. Sometimes playing a game made time pass more quickly, but Bat was too excited about his good idea to play a game. He wanted to focus all his energy on waiting for Israel to arrive. He rubbed his thumb across the rough lump of clay skunk in his pocket. Mr. Grayson pulled up in his dusty orange coupe and unfolded himself from the front seat. Hey, Bat, he said. Are you waiting for me? No, said Bat. Mr. Grayson smiled as if <clears throat> Bat had said something funny. Hey, Dr. Tam, he said to Bat's mom. Good morning, Mr. Grayson, she answered, and she put her hand on Bat's shoulder and gave it a little squeeze. Good morning, Mr. Grayson, Bat said, remembering to be polite, but he was craning his neck to see around his teacher, who was blocking his view of the parking lot entrance. Mr. Grayson's puffy orange vest looked like a traffic sign. Well, said Mr. Grayson, I'll see you inside. He smiled again, and then finally he went into the building. At last, Israel's dad tru dad's truck pulled into the parking lot. Israel's dad had the tallest, cleanest, shiniest truck that had ever seen in real life, even the hubcap shine. Israel's dad waved at Bat and his mom as Israel hopped out of the passenger seat. Hey, Bat, said Israel. He slammed the door and his dad drove away, the loud rumble of his truck fading. Do you want to be my partner for the spring project? and research growing a skrunk garden for Thor? Bat didn't mean to yell right in Israel's face, but he had waited for so long that the words practically burst out of him. Sure, that sounds fun, Israel grinned. Okay, said Bat. Then he turned to Mom. Tell Lawrence that Thor drank a bottle and a half for breakfast, he said. Lawrence helped take care of the skunk kick during the day when Bat was at school. I will, Mom said, and she bent down to give Bat a hug. You boys have a great day. Bat followed Israel through the school's front doors. The hallway was almost empty because class was about to start. There were just a few kids and Miss Kiko outside the kindergarten classroom, holding the copper bell she rang each morning to announce the start of school. Thanks for waiting for me, Israel said. We were running late because Dad couldn't find the keys to his truck. He usually leaves them in a little dish by the front door, but we'll have to research what kind of uh, plants skunks like to eat, Bat interrupted. Skunks are omnivores, which means they eat plants and animals. But I don't really know what kind of plants taste best to a skunk. Bat, Israel said, I was telling you about why we were late. You weren't late, Bat said. You were almost late. And then he went into Mr. Grayson's class before Miss Kiko rang the bell. And they really would be late. Chapter 6, Carrot Division there wasn't any time to visit baby cakes before class began. Usually the first thing Bat did when he entered Mr. Grayson's classroom was head straight to the back to check on the class pet. Baby cakes, a fluffy Angora puffball of a bunny, usually didn't respond to Bat's gentle cooing. She'd just sit atop her plastic hutch inside her pen and look stoically adorable. But today, Bat had brought a carrot from home to feed baby cakes, and she would always hop over for a carrot. If he hadn't been waiting outside of school for Israel to arrive, Bat would have had plenty of time to give the carrot to baby cakes. As it was, he would have to wait for recess. Bat sighed as he slid into his chair, hanging his backpack over the back of his seat. The carrot zipped into his backpack, seemed almost to vibrate with its desire to feed baby cakes. Mr. Grayson was standing at the front of the room, talking about something. Bat saw his mouth moving, but was having a very hard time concentrating on the words. Something about math. All around Bat, kids reached into their backpacks to pull out their folders. So Bat did too. There was the carrot, wrapped in a cloth napkin that was printed with little carrots and radishes and turnips. Bat retrieved his folder, but he grabbed the neck and wrapped carrot too. Mr. Grayson's back was to the class. He was writing math problems on the whiteboard with his favorite orange marker. It would only take a minute to walk to the back of the class and feed the carrot to baby cakes. Maybe Mr. Grayson wouldn't even turn back around until Bat had gone to the baby cakes enclosure, fed the carrot, and returned to his seat. And after all, Bat reasoned, 
Mr. Grayson had said that the class had an open door baby cakes policy, meaning that any time a kid needed to cuddle, he or she could go visit. Baby cakes, no permission needed, no questions asked. Pat didn't actually need to cuddle, but he had had an itchy feeling that baby cakes needed the carrot, and he knew that the itchy feeling wouldn't go away until he did something about it. So he unwrapped the carrot and pushed back his chair as quietly as he could. He tiptoed to the back of the class, ignoring the stares from Jenny and Luca, and reached into the pen to feed the carrots to baby cakes. Her twitchy nose twitched at the carrot, and baby cakes jumped down from her perch atop the plastic hutch and hopped over to Bat. Silently, Bat held the carrot as baby cakes nibbled at it. She took little bites and chewed them quickly, her white face vibrating with joy. Bat, said Mr. Grayson's voice from just behind Bat's left shoulder. Bat jumped, startled, and his quick movement scared baby cakes who darted into her hutch, just her fluffy tail sticking out. You made me scare baby cakes, Bat said. She'll recover, Mr. Grayson said. Do you think you could save the rest of her carrot until break? We are starting math time. I need to make sure baby cakes isn't upset, Bat said. You can't just startle someone and not apologize. It occurred to Bat that maybe Mr. Grayson owed him an apology for the same reason. But Mr. Grayson didn't offer one. <clears throat> okay, Bat, Mr. Grayson said. But he didn't leave. He stood there waiting for Bat to go back to his seat. Bat sighed. Sorry, baby cakes, he said in his gentlest voice. Then he broke the carrot into three smaller pieces and set the pieces softly down inside the bunny's enclosure before he went back to his seat. Dividing one carrot into three parts, Bat thought, should count as math for the day.